Could quantum mechanics save black holes? After all, black holes are well known for causing trouble amongst theoretical physicists. From the looming presence of physical infinities to the subtle details of the information paradox, black holes are real head scratchers. But maybe, just maybe, a careful treatment of quantum fields make all those problems go away. Enter black stars. First hypothesized in 2007 by a team of physicists, a black star is a proposed alternative to what's left behind after a giant star explodes. Rather than the remaining matter collapsing in unimpeded, the black star scenario requires that something slows the process down, allowing for a collapse that is always approaching, but never reaching, a black hole state, horizon and all. And plausibly, that something is quantum gravitational dynamics. But I digress. If there is such a slowing mechanism, whatever it might be, we can invoke something called semi-classical gravity to save our collapsing star from oblivion. Simply put, semi-classical gravity is what you get when you treat Einstein's gravity in the usual way, but assume the matter that provides the gravity is coming from quantum field theory. To make sense of the setting, then, we need to understand what the underlying quantum fields are doing during a gravitational collapse. Now, in any gravitational collapse, semi-classical or otherwise, the gravitational well gets very deep as the infalling quantum stuff approaches what would be the horizon. In fact, because time dilation sets in, an outside observer will see all of the quantum fields, including the quantum fields that exist in the vacuum of space, begin to pile up right next to where the horizon would like to be. This leads to one of the classic infinities that pops up whenever we do quantum field theory. However, as the would-be horizon begins to form and grow, the quantum vacuum itself starts to distort, costing energy that was built up near the horizon, the amount of which depends on the precise details of the collapse. But regardless of the details, the energy that the vacuum distortions require is infinite. And so that infinite energy accumulated by the infalling field quanta is expended in exactly the process that forms it. The net result is that the accumulated energy is finite, and the amount of energy left over in this process depends exactly on how the collapse happened. Now if the collapse is slow, the details of the collapse are such that there's not quite enough stored energy to pay for the field distortions, so the residual energy left over works out to be negative, with the amount being related to how slow the collapse is. Now if positive mass, and hence positive energy, tends to cause horizon formation, negative energy tends to resist horizon formation, and so the collapse is slowed down even more, starting a feedback loop. The inevitable result is that no horizon ever forms. This matter is always less dense than would be required to form an event horizon. But from the outside, these things would be basically indistinguishable from genuine black holes. And if no event horizon ever forms, then even classically, there's no guarantee that a singularity ever exists. After all, Penrose's black hole singularity theorem only says that a gravitational singularity is inevitable when it's surrounded by an event horizon. So if these are truly the route that gravitational collapses take, then we don't need to worry about singularities existing in the universe. Similarly, the black hole information paradox becomes quite easily resolved. If there's no horizon, then information can cross from inside the star to outside, meaning there's no information conservation violation in relativity to worry about. Neat, right? 